one of the most powerful tools to combat inflammation doesn't come from the pharmacy, but from the grocery store. Harvard Health Publishing posted an article on March 24, 2024, with foods that fight inflammation. Now, according to Dr. Frank Hugh, professor of nutrition and epidemiology in the Department of Nutrition at the Harvard School of Public Health, he said many experimental studies have shown that components of food or beverages have lots of anti-inflammatory effects. Everyone knows that a good diet is the key to good health, but what foods specifically aggravate the body, increase inflammation, and what foods should you incorporate in your diet to fight inflammation and stay healthy. Now, in this episode of Daily Dose with me, I'm Dr. Mitch, the Chief Medical Officer of Hue Light USA. I'm going to be taking a close look at how a simple change in your diet can lower your risk of a multitude of health concerns and increase your physical and mental health. Now, be sure to watch to the end because in this special edition of The Daily Dose, I'm going to be giving you an insight into my diet, special foods, and what I, as the last tip, I use to stay healthy. You probably won't guess this. And by the way, if you like our content, you know, please subscribe, share below, uh, tell your friends, ring the bell so you'll know as soon as we release new content. Now, let's dive into this. Now, Dr. Hugh said, some of the foods that have been associated with increased risk for chronic diseases, such as type 2 diabetes and heart disease are often associated with excess inflammation. Now, it's not surprising since inflammation is an important underlying mechanism for the development of these diseases. Let's go back to the Harvard Health Study. They can and they did shed some light on this. They said, what does anti-inflammatory diet do? Well, your immune system, they noted, becomes activated when your body recognizes Anything that's foreign, such as an invading microbe, plant pollen, chemical. This often triggers a process called inflammation. Then intermittent bouts of inflammation directed at truly threatening invaders per- protect your health. However, sometimes inflammation persists day in and day out when you're not threatened by a foreign invader. Now, that's when inflammation can become your enemy. And major diseases that plague us, like cancer, heart disease, diabetes, arthritis, depression, Alzheimer's, have all been linked to chronic inflammation. We've said this so many times and we're just making a point of this now because I figured by now you're saying, all right, I got it, Mitch. What food should I do? What should I avoid? Okay, let's go into this because these are the foods. Some of them will be very relevant and you go, yeah, I know that. Refined carbohydrates. That's the one you all should be shaking your heads. Yeah, I know that. Instead of white bread and pastas and pastries, go whole grain, whole wheat, brown rice, but make it, you know, oats, for example, for the fiber and the nutrients. Stay away from the fried foods. These are unhealthy. Go for grilled and roasted options. Get rid of the sugary sweet beverages. Replace soda and sugar drinks with water or herbal teas that are organic or flavored water that's infused only with fruits and herbs, not with all these, you know, crazy sugar substitutes. That's a whole other story. And red and processed meats, yeah, get rid of them. Choose leaner proteins, poultry, fish, beans, lentils, tofu, tempeh. These are good options and they can help you. And of course, for I I guess you've heard a million times, stay away from the trans fats, particularly margarine, shortening, and even lard by opting for healthier fats. We've talked about olive oil, avocado oil, nuts, and seeds. These are the important ones. But let me get to my secret to my healthy diet. And still, there's still one more at the very end I'm going to give you. For people that have inflammation, one of the things that promote it often are a group of vegetables, etc., that are in the solenoid family or solanaceae family. They're called nightshades. You might have heard of them. But just to remind those that already have heard, things that should be off your daily list if you have any kind of inflammation are white potatoes, tomato, eggplant, chili peppers, red and green bell peppers, tobacco, Golgi berries, pimentos, red spices such as curry powder, chili powder, cayenne pepper, and of course, the popular herb ashwagandha. But by the way, sweet potatoes, onions, mushrooms, black pepper are not nightshades and are otherwise okay to eat. And by making these substitutions, you can improve your diet, reduce the intake of unhealthy elements. You know, you're going to have better health for you and your family 
basically. Now let's break it down. An anti-inflammatory diet focuses on incorporating foods that reduce inflammation of the body. The different foods that are beneficial as summary is olive oil. We've talked about this on other episodes. Green leafy vegetables make them organic because the pesticides, insecticides, herbicides can also promote inflammation. So organic, 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 in my opinion, spinach, kale, collard greens, excellent sources of vitamin, minerals, and polynutrients. Nuts like almonds and walnuts because they're high in omega-3 fatty acids. They can also help reduce inflammation. And the fatty fish, salmon, mackerel, tuna, and sardines are rich in omega-3 fatty acids. Yeah, I know tuna and some of these fish have mercury discussion for another episode but fruits that have a great amount of the polyphenols like strawberries blueberries cherries oranges lots of antioxidants vitamins fiber and they're extremely helpful and as i promised my secret that every day i use raw organic honey now you might have never thought about this before but honey is the source of the oldest billions of year probiotics good bacteria for the gut ever ever anywhere honey by itself if you look carefully at the literature could be extremely anti-inflammatory and if you also look carefully it doesn't provoke insulin release nowhere near the other sugars that we talked about in today's episode and actually it can be helpful for diabetics as well if it's taken in small quantities you may be saying okay i'm going to type you what's a small quantity quantity i'd say a tablespoon or less a day is wonderful i do it i encourage all my patients to do it i encourage you as a viewer to think about that too thank you so much for watching i'm dr mitch chief medical officer of hue light usa and for more information you can visit our website at hue have a wonderful wonderful day 